。O lo pones en tu teléfono, ¿quién está en tu teléfono? Welcome to our youth uh, two weekend power backs. Um, we hope that not only tonight, but we hope that every session you'll be able to learn something about the Lord, learn something about yourself, and maybe experience something that you haven't experienced before. And we hope that um, you leave out of the session with a whole new view of life and knowing that the Lord loves you.
Okay, I'm gonna ask that um, we all bow our heads for a word of prayer. Okay, let's pray. Um, our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Thank you, Lord, for giving us another day of life to see your wonders and to do your works. Lord, tonight I ask um, you to please be with us and to bless us as we begin this youth ministry weekend. I pray that um, what we hear and what we learn stays in our hearts and our minds. And may we do your work and share with others. Please bless the families represented here tonight, as well as, as those who are not with us. In your precious name I pray, amen. session, we are going to have something called a youth uh, Q&A. Um, 
and our, our youth corner. And um, it's just going to be a couple of questions uh, that our youth can answer. And maybe one of us out there feels the same as this person. Maybe it'll help you feel that you're not alone. Maybe you're on the same boat everybody else is on. So this evening, um, our special guest for our youth corner is Christina Martinez. Welcome, Christina. Hi, guys. Happy Sabbath. Um, so to start off our little interview, um, our first question that we want to ask Christina, you know, throughout this whole pandemic is um, what have you learned about yourself during this pandemic that you are proud of most? Um, so I think this, this, I was really not expecting to be the FEHA president uh, last year. Uh, so it's, it's funny that uh, this happened the whole pandemic and it was my first year of FEHA presidency so it's there's there's been a lot of ups and downs um but I praise God because uh it's I mean you're you're here and um you know you're you're doing things for the Lord and you're helping the youth um I think this year uh, what I've learned about myself is that uh I read a lot of books. Uh, there's a lot of books that I've been reading, uh, a lot of audio books. Uh, I've gone through almost all of the LNG White books again, so I'm grateful for that. And um, something that I didn't know about myself was that I'm actually a pretty good gardener. I have a green thumb, so that's that's been awesome. interesting. That's awesome. So um, with everything going on, you know. Um, with our lives getting flipped upside down. Uh, what do you feel you have missed out on during the pandemic? Something that you miss truly from when things were normal to what our new normal is now. It's funny that you ask that because uh, a few months ago I had a, uh, this conversation with my mom actually. Um, I'm not the type of person that likes, you know, to be touchy feely. Uh, I'm not a hugger. <laughs> So I think out of this entire pandemic, I've really, I've really missed hugging people. Um, you know, you go to church and you say hi to people, you shake their hand, you hug them, you hang out. Um, I think that's that's been one of the <laughs> the greatest things that I've I've noticed that now um, I took for granted, but now I, I do see that I really do miss uh, uh, that you know closeness to people. Um, also maybe being in nature, camping. Yeah, because everything's closed now, right? <laughs> yeah. So you definitely can't really just take a hike when you feel like taking a hike. You have to be like really careful about it. Yeah. Um, with that being said, what are, what have been some of the struggles that you have seen with your friends, that you've seen your friends struggle with uh, during this pandemic or maybe your family? You know, I know you have a set of siblings as well. Um, maybe there's something that you never noticed they struggled with before. And now during this time, um, you've noticed something different that they're struggling with than what they would have normally struggled with on a normal day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, um, I think I think uh, most of my friends, including myself, uh, depression, a lot of a lot of us, I think in the past, we, we were kind of in and out of depression and we, we understood what depression was. But I think being quarantined and being, you know, stuck at home and a lot of you can't do this, you can't do that, um, I think has really brought us into our feels. <laughs> so we get to feel everything now. Um, so it's, it's a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety, um, a lot of stress, uh, a lot of annoyances. I know the first few months of being quarantined was super annoying because you're in close quarters with your family and I mean, you love them, but uh, having to be in with your family for, you know, a few months, then you start to feel it like, okay, I love you. You have been annoying. You're really annoying me now. <laughs> so I think we've all, we've all gone through that. Um, I think right now, uh, most of my friends, uh, have been speaking out about uh, anxieties. Um, I can speak about myself. Um, there's a lot of work. Um, 
I, I don't know how, how a few of you guys are doing with, with work and um, maybe working from home. Uh, I don't have the luxury of working from home, so I have to physically be at work. Um, just the fact that we're moving warehouses uh, is, is a lot of stress and anxiety for me because it's, it's a lot of moving parts and uh, you have to physically be there to do certain things and having to physically be in the city hall, physically having to be at work, physically having to do a lot of things is, is something that you have to continue to remember that you can't get close to people. You have to remember that, you know, someone's getting close to, you have to step back. So it's, it's just that anxiety of knowing that you have to remember to keep your distance. Yeah, that must be really hard. Well, Christina, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining us. And we hope that throughout this pandemic, you know, you know that we are sending you virtual hugs from far away. And <laughs> we you. miss you and that soon we'll all be together again. Um, but thank you for um, that short interview. Thank you guys for having me. What is up, you guys? Welcome again to our Youth Weekend entitled Peace with God is Peace of Mind. And I'm so excited tonight to introduce our speaker. You know, I've known him for a couple of years. In fact, he was my neighbor when I lived in Michigan. He loves soccer. Uh, he loves working with youth. And it's such an awesome privilege uh, for him to be able to share from his home in uh, Maryland. So that's where he resides. Uh, let's give it up tonight. Let's give a warm welcome to our guest speaker, Pastor Armando Miranda Jr. Good evening, good morning, good whatever it is, wherever you are. This is Pastor Armando Miranda from uh, my little place over here near my house. Little forest that right now looks amazing. If you can see it around me. Full of snow and nice. You know, every time I come to this place, I get to, uh, you know, experience different seasons. You know, I've, I've been coming here for the last year. In the spring, it was all green coming out. In the summer, it was all hot. <laughs> In the fall, changing colors, falling leaves and everything. And right now, in the middle of winter, is an amazing display of all the things that happen throughout our season of life. And you know, talking about winter, you know, uh, you may be going through a season of winter. Let me tell you why. You know, there are moments that, and that I have found myself a little, little dead inside. You see, if you see the trees and everything around with winter, the leaves fall. There are things that are not working that go dormant. There's not much um, in life, if you want to say it, is see it. Everything is dead. You see it and starting to fall. The leaves are coming down. And suddenly, you end up with no leaves on the trees. Um, you end up with no life. You see, that's the beautiful thing about the spring. That you can actually see everything regrow, re rebirth, and become green. But have you felt that you are like in a in the middle of a of a winter? You know, talking about my life, I'm sure that the last few months for you and me have been very tough. Some of us have been at home for many many months with almost zero contact or very little contact with friends. I mean, you can connect with them through um, chat, through Instagram, through, you know, TikTok and Snapchat and Facebook, whatever you do for text. But somehow you miss those hugs, you miss those laughs, you miss spending time together, you miss that moment when you spend so much time together. And suddenly you're like in the middle of this moment in your life and you want to get out of it. I mean, I understand. I've been caught up in, in so much work at the same time. I miss friends. I got my family by me, but sometimes it's like, I miss my friends. And there are moments where you're like, man, I don't wanna 
I don't want to stay inside. I want to go outside and meet friends and talk to them and hug them and, and be close to them. But this social distance is killing us. You see, the pandemic has something to do with that. And I pray that you're stay, you stay safe. And no matter what happens, that you, you still respect uh, the social distancing guidelines. But I got to tell you, we all miss our friends. And in that moment, sometimes it becomes like a depression moment, like, like a winter. Everything is, is just dreary, gray in our lives. And you're like, man, I don't feel anything. I'm numb. I want something else. I want something else. You know, I got to tell you, you're not the only one. You're not the first one to feel that way in the world or right now or even in the bible yes in the bible there were people like you and me who had a rough time and one of them i want to share with you the story today because i want you to understand that through it all there's hope for you you see this is the thing there was a guy a prophet a prophet named elijah if you remember the story uh, first Kings you remember the story when Elijah was fighting against uh, well not fighting but in a battle of who has the biggest God and remember that it hasn't rained in three years and suddenly you know he says let me challenge those people that think that Baal is the greatest God to a challenge if Baal is God, then let him send fire from heaven and consume the, uh, the sacrifice they're going to put in there. But if God is God, let him do that. So remember, they go to the mount, top, uh, mount, top of the Mount Carmel, and they start, they start, uh, you know, for a day, for the whole day, hours, you know, dancing around that sacrifice, and, and there was no fire from heaven from Baal. And you think about Elijah, he is confident, he is a prophet, he's right there to defend God's honor. And you know what happened? You know what happened. When he prays, God sends fire from above and God burns the sacrifice to completely ashes. Not only that, God brings the rain after that. Very interesting because this guy who had trusted God for three years, God provided food for him, God provided everything for him, and God showed up in that big victory and you're like, yes, not only God did, did God show up, but God is also delivering him from, from, from uh, you know, the rain. He's, he's saying, go run. And, and, and he's running ahead of a chariot, leading the king into his palace. And the interesting thing of the story is that after this, you, you would think that this guy has it, has it together. He, he trusts God, God is with him. There's nothing wrong in his life. Suddenly we hear a woman the king's wife saying, I'm going to kill Elijah. And suddenly Elijah forgets all these things, forgets that God has been within, providing for everything. And God, and he says, you know what? I'm gonna run, I don't wanna die. Now think for a moment. This is Elijah, a prophet, someone who's seen God come through in his life. And yet he is fearful, he's running. And I think about that because you and me tend to be like him. We have seen God's deliverance. Maybe we have felt his presence in our moments of, of pain. And we have seen how he has provided. And we have seen his hand in our lives. And yet, you know, with all our victories and everything that we've seen, when something comes our way that is a little too much that we think we can't handle, we forget. So Elijah forgot and started running towards outside. You know, he started running somewhere. He didn't want to be. He didn't want to be there because he thought that Jezebel was going to kill him. Now, this is an interesting thing. It seems like he forgot. And he runs for so many hours. He gets so exhausted. He gets so cranky. You can read the story. It's funny. It says that he was there and God said, you know what? Take a nap. I'm going to feed you and take a nap. The story of Elijah. It's interesting. So you see the, 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 the need of a good food and, and a good nap after you're cranky and you're, you're, you're in, in danger. You need a good nap and you need good food. 
And this is the interesting thing. He keeps running all the way, the farthest away possible. Even though God fed him again, even though God told him, you got to take a nap, he's refreshed and he keeps running all the way to the mountain of God. And that is actually in Mount Sinai. They say that he ran so long and so far, there was nobody in the wilderness with him. So he's escaping his reality. He doesn't want to know about Jezebel. He doesn't want to know about what God is doing again in, in the kingdom of Israel. He just wants to leave. And sometimes you and I want to leave. We just want to get away. We don't want to talk to anybody. We don't want to listen to anybody. We just want to take a nap, a long nap or maybe a long two, three week retreat into our room with nobody coming. And, and we don't want to eat or we want to eat and then go go to our bed and just we may be depressed like Elijah yes Elijah sounded like he was depressed and I gotta tell you this quarantine is not easy and maybe you are depressed maybe you're facing some anxiety moments maybe you are thinking man what is wrong with me I don't know what's going on and I gotta tell you one thing it is okay it is okay if you are feeling that way you're not out of hope you should not worry that this is this is so this doesn't happen to you it can happen to anybody it happened to Elijah it happened to him even in the victories that God showed up in his life when when he showed up in his life so if it happened to a prophet it can happen to you it's okay accept it you may need to actually take some time off maybe like Elijah a retreat <laughs> Because this is what actually he had. He started running towards the place and he goes to the mountain of God. The Bible says that he is right over there in the mountain of God. And suddenly he hears a, 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 a whirlwind and he, he has an earthquake and, and all these things happen. But the, the thing that mattered the most was the little boys. And the Bible says that that little boys was telling him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Now. I like the wording because you see, if God was so far away, he could have said, what are you doing there, Elijah? Or, or if he was over there, he's like, hey, Elijah, what are you doing there? And screaming, but God says, the story says that God spoke in a still small voice and he said, what are you doing here? That meant that God was with him right there in that place. Now think about it. Maybe you are in the pit. Maybe you're hiding in the cave. Maybe you don't want to come out of your room. And maybe you haven't heard that voice, but God is saying, what are you doing here, Armando? What are you doing here, Joe? What are you doing here, Julie? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? And you know, I got to tell you, I felt those moments in my life a lot. I felt like I don't want to. I don't want to do it. I, I just... I want to stay there in that moment. I, I, I don't want to talk to anybody. Leave me alone. Leave me watching Netflix series. Let me watch Disney Plus or, you know, uh, Hulu or, or whatever. Let me just watch YouTube videos and just lose my mind in that. And you see, you end up spending hours and hours because you feel that that's the only one that you can get distracted from the reality of life. And I gotta tell you today, don't do that. Instead of trying to be distracted with Netflix, with YouTube, with, with the time in our, on our social media, with reels and TikToks and all this stuff, put a pause in there. Listen to the, to the word of God. He's telling you and me today, he knows, we're in a pandemic, he knows it's a mess. He knows that this is tough. But he's not out there saying, what are you doing there? Why don't you snap out of it? He's actually with you. God is with you and he's saying, what are you doing here? I want to work through you. I want to be with you. I, gotta, I want to spend time with you. Instead of spending time watching videos and YouTube videos and all these things, why don't you spend time with me? And I know it's tough. I know it's tough to leave those videos and grab a Bible or, or, or just to be disconnected or just pray or just spend time reading the Bible in your Bible app. I know it's tough. But you know what? You may need to do that. And if you are actually, um, uh, you know, if you're actually listening to this, I got to tell you, 
you also may be depressed and you might need more help uh, than, 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 than what I'm saying right now because God will help you. Yes, he will. And the Bible and praying will help you. But sometimes you need a little more than that. And you need to go with people that God has given a talent and God has given the training, allowed them to go through training. And you got, may need to go to therapy or, or to the doctor or something. But please, know that there is hope. That God is not far from you. That He cares for you. That He, he wants to heal you and walk with you and hug you and, and embrace you and, and talk to you. But for that to happen, you may need to make some time and say, God help me here. I'm in my room, stuck with my Netflix and things, my phone. I'm tired, I don't want to see anybody. I plead with you that you stop what you're doing. That you close your eyes and you plead to God and say, Lord, help me. Lord, come and show me into my life the things that I need right now. You see, God is our refuge and our strength. He walks with us even though we walk through the valley of the shadow and death. He cares for you because He made you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. He wants for you to have a future and a hope. He has better plans for your life than you have for yourself. But sometimes we forget. And we are stuck in this winter of our lives. I gotta tell you, right after winter, the spring comes. Just like after the night, the morning comes and the sun shines out again. You may be in a dark night. You may be in a moment in a long winter and you say, well, I hope spring comes and it will come. God has promised to never leave you nor forsake you. So I tell you today, cheer up, pray, listen to his voice, seek him and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart. He has the solution. And maybe if you cannot come out of it completely, go with those people that God has gifted and allowed to study so that you can be counseled or go to a doctor that can help you come out of this. Depression is no joke. A lot more people are depressed, especially during the pandemic. So I pray that you take a look at the resources that the church has uh, put forth for you. Pray and know that God is with you, even in that little corner, your cave. He's coming to you and say, what are you doing here? He wants to be with you. So friends, I pray that you see that, that you see our God being with you at all times. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, and may the Lord make his face shine upon you and grant you peace. Blessings to you all. See ya. If you've been blessed by this message, I want to ask you right now that you will take out your phone and just send a text, invite someone that you know that, that has gone through the, a dark winter um, so that they can have hope, they can know that God is with them. Uh, we want to thank Pastor Armando Miranda Jr. Uh, for sharing this message with us tonight. Um, it reminds us that there is a beautiful, bright day coming right after a dark winter. And so I want to encourage you that tonight uh, you'll message someone and invite them to listen to this message. It might just be God speaking to them and to each and every one of us. I want to let you know that, that tomorrow we're going to continue this awesome journey. Peace with God is peace of mind. Tomorrow morning, you don't want to miss it, 1130 a.m., we're going to have a special speaker, Dr. Saul Ramos. He's going to be talking about something. Maybe you have a friend who has been dealing with uh, depression. So he's going to share with us what are some steps to overcome and to beat depression. And so you won't want to miss it tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. And then we're going to finish off Saturday at 
5 p.m. with uh, Dr. Rogelio Pacini. He'll be with us as well, sharing with us an important message on how we can have uh, good health, uh, how we can have uh, uh, good um, overall mental health. And I know that you won't want to miss it. Tonight, I just want to pray for that friend that you're going to be contacting, that you'll be messaging and inviting them right now. In fact, why don't you take out your phone right now, if you have it with you, and just think of someone that you know that has gone through a difficult time uh, during this pandemic, during this dark winter of the soul, and just invite them just to listen to this message uh, of Pastor Armando Miranda Jr. As you're doing that, I want to pray for that friend that you're messaging, and I want to pray for each and every one of us as well, so that we also can know that we are not alone, that we continue to study, sing, and pray for there is a bright day coming uh, right after the dark winter. So as you're messaging, let me pray for your friends and pray for each and every one of us as we finish tonight. Father in heaven, we're so thankful for the beautiful promise that you are with us, we're not alone. Um, it's not enough just to pretend as if we're not being affected by uh, being socially distanced one from, one from another. Um, we need this community uh, and we ask in a special way that uh, you would help us so that we can know that you are with us. We're not alone, that you are inviting us to continue to trust and to pray and to sing and to know that uh, your presence is with each and every young person. Tonight, in a special way, we pray for the friends of each young person. We pray for the people that are being invited to listen to this message tonight. It might just be your word to them to bring them hope and bring them encouragement. So uh, bless the people that will be watching this message and thank you again for each of the young adults and the youth that have participated tonight. May you bless them and encourage them and let them know that peace with God is peace of mind. We thank you again so much in Jesus name, amen and amen. Well, I wanna thank you again for joining us tonight and I wanna invite you tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time we're going to be having our second uh, program, Peace with God is Peace of Mind. And again, the topic will be how to overcome depression. Our speaker will be Dr. Saul Ramos. Can't wait to see you. May God bless you. And may you have a good night.